Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today. I am Cecilia Savajan with Travel Oregon on the integrated marketing team. And we are here today to learn about local. Um, we're going to cover local fundamentals for lodging properties and restaurants. And I'm excited to inter introduce you to our expert and presenter today, Alexa Darrow with Local. Welcome, Alexa. Hi, Cecilia. Thank you so much. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as Cecilia mentioned, I'm going to be going over some important information that you may or may not know about um, in terms of your Google presence, um, specifically Google Maps. And um, at the end, like Cecilia said, we'll be answering any questions that you might have. Um, I'm also going to run through a demo of the local software, which you do get for free uh, via Travel Oregon and our partnership. So we'll show you where to go to sign up for that, um, and we'll have a bunch of information for you and can answer any questions at the end. So um, as Cecilia mentioned, my name is Alexa Darrow, um, and I am with Local. Um, I actually come from a tourism and hospitality background. I've been with Local for four years now, um, and uh, before that, I used to do public relations in the hospitality space. Um, so this is my passion, and I always love talking to restaurants and hotels and lodging properties, businesses such as yours. So I'm super excited to be here. Uh, as you may or may not know, 90% of internet searches happen in Google. So when you think about um, visiting a new place or um, even just day to day from home or as you're out and about in the world, uh, chances are you're on your smartphone or on your computer and you're searching for something, whether that's a question or information about a place that you want to visit or a product you want to buy inside of Google. Nearly half of these searches are local in nature. So what this means is that um, people are actually searching for these things uh, near the destination that they're trying to visit. <clears throat> So this probably looks pretty familiar to you. So I'm sure most of you uh, have smartphones, whether it's a Droid or an iPhone, and chances are there's been some point in the last probably week even that you've picked up your phone and you've searched for something locally. So here we have an example of best ice cream. So I'm based in Portland. Um, and so, you know, here you can see some uh, examples of what some of the quote unquote best ice cream is near me. Um, so some of these searches might include keywords also like best ice cream near me, best ice cream in Portland, et cetera. So you pick up your phone, you search for best ice cream or for whatever you're looking for. And then you decide based on a variety of things, uh, business hours, are they open right now? How far away are they? What is um, the best option for you in that moment? So once you choose, then what you're going to do, chances are, is click that direction button, or perhaps you're going to press call to find out more information. And then eventually you'll probably make a visit and a purchase. So as you can see, someone here searching, finding directions, purchasing, and buying their ice cream. This is pretty standard, and this is just how it's been for the last handful of years. <clears throat> Uh, these searches can happen on mobile, like I just showed you, but they also happen a few other ways. So, um, you know, you might be familiar with just a, a basic Google search on your desktop, on your computer, um, or potentially just using the Google Maps search um, app itself. Um, so lots of ways to find out about this information. So what controls the information that you're seeing on Google is actually a thing called Google Business Profile. So Google Business Profile is the largest source of organic search exposure for businesses online. Um, so when you're also thinking about Google, I want you to start thinking about it as your digital front door, right? Like this is how people are actually finding you. And um, it's, it's basically today's yellow pages. So um, the profiles are a huge and significant signal ranking inside of Google. And it's a top driver for these zero click searches. So think about the way that you're choosing how you're going to find something or visit or make a purchase, right? So you're looking for accurate and compelling listings, and you'll probably hear me say that a few times today. Um, so up-to-date listings on Google and Google Business Profile are 2.7 times more likely to, to be considered reputable, 70% more likely to attract location visits, 
and then 50% more likely to lead to an actual purchase. So you want to make sure that your listings are up to date. They look good. Um, you know, thinking about things like beautiful photos or even just any photos, they don't have to be like the most um, perfect professional looking photography, but just having good photos that rep represent who you are um, and then a, a variety of accurate information. So there's a few things that um, we call easy wins when you're thinking about Google. And if this is the first time that you're really starting to think about your listing, or even if it's not, even if you have experience in it, these are the things that you should think about right off the bat. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that you claim your business listing. So in order to use local, which is our software, you need to have a claimed and verified business listing, which basically means that it's um, it's. Uh, claimed on Google, like through Google's eyes, it's official. Um, we'll have a slide at the end of this deck that Cecilia will be sending you that actually shows you how to do this in case you haven't done so yet. Um, then you're going to want to go through and just add any of the missing information that might not be there. Um, so, you know, like address or website, etc. You're going to want to create a short business description. So basically think about this as your boilerplate, like you're about um, telling people who you are, what you do, um, really thinking about like keywords that would draw people in. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later too, when I'm going through the demo, but, uh, you just want to make sure that you, you have an about section essentially, um, update photos, like I just mentioned, and then engaging with your customers through Google reviews. So as I mentioned, your Google business profile is what controls your maps listing. So uh, this is likely, if you have a maps listing, what you see when you open it up. So there's, you know, a place to edit your profile. You can um, add photos, look at your performance analytics, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of that, once it's updated, shows up on Google Maps like so. So you have your list of businesses and all of the information in there that can be clicked and then show it on the map to show people where exactly you're going. So if you have used Google and Google Business Profile, you might have run into some platform challenges. So Google Business Profile can get very overwhelming pretty quickly. There's a lot of information there that's not necessarily needed. Um, and they don't really give you a good idea of what you should be doing and when you should be doing it. It's really a guessing game for people. Um, also multiple location ma management is super challenging. So if you are a, an owner of, let's say three businesses, um, let's say you have uh, three of the same restaurant in just in different locations around the state or in the city that you live in, um, managing all these locations at once is, it's tricky. Um, they don't really give you an option other than to manage each of them at one time. Um, the analytics and the insights that you are receiving from Google Business Profile are actually limited. Um, so you're only getting about six plus months worth of analytics. Um, so if you want to look at like year over year comparisons, you're not able to do so. Um, and then it's also not connected to any other social channels. So like you can't connect it to a Facebook or Instagram. Um, if you're already active on those platforms, that's not a possibility. So local was created basically to solve for the problem of a lot of the things that I just talked about. So local gives you access to expanded features that you're able to use. Um, we've made our platform incredibly user-friendly, so it takes the guessing work out of what you should be doing. Um, it also saves you time because you're not having to go sign out and sign back into each individual location to make those updates. Um, and then there's also a real person, customer service and support, uh, or people that are able to help you. So if you've ever had to, you know, uh, email or um, request info for or uh, uh, flag a problem with Google, you probably know that it's really frustrating because you're not always talking to a real person. So, um, so yes, so we've created local to help. So some of the key differentiators, and I'll, like I said, I'll walk through this in a longer demo here in a few minutes, but basically um, with local, you can manage all of your listings in a single hub. So like I said before, if you are an owner of three businesses, you can actually connect your Google business profile to local and see all of those businesses in one place, which is super helpful. Uh, you can also monitor your business performance. You can see 18 plus months worth of history and analytics data 
compared to that six months I was talking about through Google. So you can look at those year over year comparisons. Um, you can get really granular with the information and just see a larger range of analytics to figure out what's actually happening on your Google Maps listings. Um, you can also engage uh, with customer reviews right from our platform. So that means responding to reviews quickly, being notified when you have a negative review so you can respond quickly, et cetera. Um, you can promote uh, things that are happening at your establishment, what's new, some events um, via Google posts. And then you can also connect to Travel Oregon's listing database, Otis, which um, Cecilia can speak more to later. But um, this is really great because basically anytime you update information inside of local, like your basic business information, it's also being pushed to Travel Oregon's listing database. So it updates on their website as well. <clears throat> and then additionally, um, something I wanted to mention is that we've expanded our partnership uh, with Travel Oregon to provide you with full access to our Plus Reach subscription, also for free. So as I mentioned, because uh, you're here with Travel Oregon, Basically, when you sign up for local, you're getting all of this for free. And with your plus reach benefits, not only are you able to push it to Otis, the Travel Oregon Listing Management, and Google, but also 75 plus other online directories. So things like Apple Maps, Bing, et cetera. So when you click an update button, which I'll show you, it's going to go out to all of these other directories, which is great. So really, that's keeping all of your information consistent over the internet um, in multiple places. Things like your you know, business name, your phone number, all of that basic business information that's super tedious to manage on your own um, through each individual directory. It's just incredibly time consuming. So this just makes it all much easier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually stop sharing my screen for a second. I'm also going to stop my video here because I'm going to go into demo mode. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through a quick demo of our software. And I know Cecilia mentioned that we are here till about one o'clock. Uh, we might end this a little bit earlier. So uh, you guys can take an actual lunch break if you have one. Um, but we also have that plan that time. So there is plenty of time, like I said, for questions, et cetera. So um, I will try to get through this um, quickly, but also not too quickly because there is a lot going on here. Um, so <clears throat> with everything that we just talked about, the way that you find the place to sign up for local is by visiting this link, which Cecilia will drop into the Zoom. And then we also have it in the deck and email that she's going to be sending out after this webinar. Um, but basically, you'll want to visit local.io slash travel Oregon. So here you can find more information about local, about the partnership. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is click this get started button. Once you click that, it's gonna ask you just a few basic questions, your name, your email address, um, company, and then it's gonna ask you to connect to your Google business profile. So again, if you don't have a listing that's already been claimed and you don't have a registered Google business profile account, that's gonna be step one. Then you can come over here and do this um, and connect that Google business account. So basically once that's connected, it's gonna pull in all of your information from Google and your Google account into local. So that way you are able to manage your business listings through local instead of doing it inside of Google for all of the reasons we just discussed. <clears throat> so once you're there, then you're gonna be inside of your local account. So um, I'm using a demo account today that's actually through a different partnership with Travel Portland. Um, when you sign up, what you're gonna see is the Travel Oregon logo here. But I wanted to use this example because um, this is a really established business in Portland. They've been on local for a while. Um, this is Orox Leather. You might be familiar with them. They're a leather goods company downtown. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that you see, um, you know, what some good examples of what they're doing are. So that way, maybe you can take some of this and do it yourself as well. Um, so when you come in here, um, there are a few things that you're going to want to do when you first sign in. So after you've connected your Google business profile, which pulls in your uh, all of your information, you're going to want to come in and just make sure that you're uh, editing some of the basic things. So we're making sure that the basic things are up to date. So first things first, you're going to want to go to this uh, manage location section. So this is where you're going to see things like your business name, your hours, et cetera. So 
first, like most importantly, make sure that your business name is showing up uh, the way that you want. You'd be surprised how many people actually don't have the proper name listed on Google for whatever reason. Maybe someone created the account years ago and the business name has changed. Um, maybe it's the business has, um, you know, you've added things to your business that you didn't have before. Anyway, just make sure that the name is correct. Um, and then when you do click this update button, and then that will be sure that this is up to date on Google and all of those other platforms that we talked about. Next, I would confirm your business hours. So this is one of the simplest yet most important ways to stay connected to your customers. Making sure your hours are up to date is how people will know if you're open or you're closed. Um, and if your hours are inaccurate, you could actually risk losing a sale. So if you think about it, like the worst thing in the world is when you're super excited to visit a restaurant or, um, you know, if you, if you uh, are trying to go somewhere to pick something up and you arrive and the place is closed. Not only have you wasted your time, but you can't get the thing that you were hoping to get in the first place. So come down here, um, make sure that you have like the proper hours set up. You can add hours here by going, um, you know, picking, let's say it's like nine to five. Um, it's super simple. And then you can even copy the hours to basically repeat them or edit them the way that you need to for each individual day and then click update. Um, I would also make sure that your business categories are selected and up to date. So um, essentially what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have a primary category and secondary categories selected. So Google allows you to set both of these things. Um, the primary category is probably most important because this is what searchers are going to see on your listing. So, um, you know, they're a leather goods company and actually I'm going to go, sorry, real quick, because I'm realizing that, um, here we go. I had the wrong tab pulled up. So hopefully you can see this still. Um, so they are a leather goods store. So this is their primary category. And then you can select additional categories on the back end, which uh, will basically help you to cast a wider net and optimize your listing. So things that they selected, which makes sense, are things like gift shop, handbag shop, um, leather goods supplier, et cetera, et cetera. So the people that are searching on Google and trying to find, let's say, like hotels near me or restaurants near me, um, if they find you, they would likely see the category hotel or the category restaurant on the map. But all of these things that are related to what they do are basically going to help power the engine on the back end. And so if somebody uh, is looking for brunch, but maybe your primary category is restaurant and you have brunch selected as one of your secondary, secondary categories, then they're going to be able to find you more easily because you have this in the back. So something to keep in mind. You can also um, manage your business description. So this is what I was talking about earlier. So this is where to do it. And this is where people are going to learn more about who you are and what you do. So as I mentioned earlier, using keywords that make sense for your business are great. So, you know, here they're talking about being BIPOC, they're designing and crafting leather goods, they're located in Chinatown, Portland, things that are specific to them that people might be searching anyway. So like gift shop Chinatown, Portland, they're more likely to show up in that search because they um, are listed like that in here. <clears throat> There's also a section um, for attributes and services. So in here, you're going to find a variety of attributes that you're going to want to make sure to go through. And the ones that are related to your business are checked off. Um, these are especially important right now, just because um, when you think about like COVID updates the last few years and health and safety issues, um, or, you know, having things like curbside pickup or delivery, et cetera, et cetera. These again, are just going to help let your customers know what you offer and also help power it um, in search on the back end. So by doing just these few things, you're going to be well on your way to starting to appear in more search results. And then again, turning those searches into sales. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, um, having compelling photos of your listing makes all the difference. So once you have updated these basic things that we just went over, you should start thinking about more performance-specific optimizations, such as photos. 
So um, with local, you're actually able to upload and schedule batch photos and videos to multiple listings at once. So as you can see here, there's a variety of collections of photography that they've up uploaded. Um, so these are going to be the photos that show up on Google and on Google Maps, in addition to the um, to the uh, uh, sorry, user submitted photos. So users of Google can also upload photos as well. But you're going to want to make sure that you're uploading photos pretty often too. Um, there's a really great statistic out there that I love to share that's basically letting people know that um, if you upload 100 plus photos on your listing, so, you know, going through and just making sure that you have like, you know, making it a goal of 100 listings with 100 photos or more start to see 20 times more views on search than those without. So not only is it helping you show up in more searches, but it's also giving your customers a view of, um, you know, who you are and what you're doing and like making you look really good. So we live in a really visual world these days and having these compelling photos are going to be super important. Um, the nice thing is with our tool, like I mentioned, you can upload photos to multiple listings at once. So by clicking the select all button, you can upload um, you know, as many photos as you want. And then you can also schedule these photos out in advance. So if you are someone, if you're a business owner, or if you're here um, doing marketing for the company you work for, basically, you know, you're wearing 12 different hats every single day and you're juggling a lot and might not have time to come in and upload photos on a regular basis. So our tool makes it really easy for you to actually schedule photo uh, uploads out in advance. Um, so that way it's doing it for you. So you can set it and forget it. Um, so I would recommend uploading photos, you know, at least once a month, but if you can just come in and schedule some out, like uploading five at a time and scheduling them out for once every week or once every few weeks, um, this is going to be great for your listing. And it's also going to be, you know, just easy for you because you don't have to worry about coming in here often. Hopefully this is making sense. <laughs> um, so additionally, um, we have an option to upload Google posts and Google posts are basically like free advertising on a listing that helps with optimization and search ranking. So they're pretty similar to social media posts. Um, you can also connect your social media accounts to local. So you can see here, they've already connected their Instagram. You can also connect your Facebook. So to do that, you'll see these buttons up at the top. Um, and then what that's going to do is going to pull in your most recent posts from those platforms that you can then recycle and post out to Google. Um, similarly to the photo uploads, you can actually schedule these out in advance. Um, so, you know, this pulls in as a draft from Instagram automatically if it's connected or Facebook, and then you can go in and edit the post, add call to action buttons, and then push that out um, at, your, um, at your leisure. So um, highly recommend taking advantage of this. Um, what's new posts are really great because that tells people exactly like what's going on at your establishment. So if you're a restaurant and you have a new happy hour, I would talk about your new happy hour menu or some like highlight from the menu. Um, if you're a lodging property, you can talk about maybe what's going on there for the summer season. Um, if you have anything new to highlight, um, any entertainment that's happening, et cetera, this would be a good place to do it. We also have a reputation manager. I think I mentioned this earlier. So basically um, the this is where you can keep track and manage all of your reviews. Um, you can even reply to each of them from your local dashboard, making it super easy to stay connected to your customers um, and see how you're doing. So as you can see in here, you can see the total number of reviews that you have over um, the course of time. Um, you can also come down here and respond directly to these reviews. Um, you can see you know, some of your keyword insights, how people are actually talking about you. You can toggle them by star rating. So um, uh, you know, if you wanted to look at only the five-star reviews or only the one-star reviews, you can do that. Um, we also have created this quick reply template too. So if you are, you know, super busy and you do have a ton of reviews coming in, which is amazing because reviews are just huge for search ranking, um, you can come in here and actually create templates that you can use in the future and you can update them. And then when you reply to these reviews, you can go in and edit them pretty quickly by just, you know, adding 
a personal touch and saying like, thank you so much, Erica. Um, or, you know, we appreciate you stopping by Andre. So Google likes to make sure that you're not um, a robot and they don't want, um, they don't want to see necessarily like the same responses. They really do want to see activity and engagement though. So even if it's a negative review, I still highly recommend uh, responding to those as well. Um, uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that if you have further questions in the question and answer. This comes up a lot, but um, I would say like just stay on top of the reviews and also make sure you're gathering more reviews from your customers, from friends and family, et cetera. Because like I said, it's um, really important to show credibility and also a huge search ranking factor on Google. <clears throat> So we help you see all of the effects of this optimization work inside of your analytics dashboard. So if you're coming in and using local, you know, a few times a month and responding to reviews regularly and adding new photos and creating some posts, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to start to see um, positive, uh, just positive um, impact and some greater analytics that you're able to report on. Um, again, you can see year over year comparison. So things like website clicks, direction requests, um, you can see calculated revenue. Um, there's a place actually in your managed location section where you can add what your average transaction value is, which is super important, um, which basically then we take that and uh, put it in a formula with the direction request that you've gotten for that time period. Um, and you can also, you know, pick what time period you want to look at. Um, but we take that and that way you can see exactly what that estimated calculated revenue is um, and just see you know, how things are looking. You can look at it with single locations, multiple locations at once. If you want to get really granular, you can do that um, with dates. Um, and then down here, you can see your top search terms. So uh, this is really helpful, especially as you're thinking about keywords and marketing, et cetera, how people are looking for you and finding you. Um, we have a whole rolling list here for the time period that's selected. So as you can see for Orox, for example, um, people are searching for Portland leather most, and that's how they're coming up more often. Um, but things like, you know, leather goods store, handbags, et cetera. Um, so keep that in mind. And then you can also see, you know, your maps views, your search views on desktop versus mobile um, and some additional consumer insights as well. So all of this is really helpful. Um, and I, once you connect, I highly recommend just spending a little bit of time in here going through, let's say you're running like a, a promotion or maybe you had some sort of special that you were running in the winter or the spring, you can go through and look at those dates to see what that activity was on your map. So it's all really helpful. Um, and then finally, um, if you're not a Google business profile expert, it's not a problem. Like I mentioned, we lay all of it out for you. So when you sign in, you'll be taken to this overview page where you'll find a personal task list that we've created to help you gain insights and information on the next steps to take inside of local. So this will keep you on track um, and help you manage your Google business profile listings like a pro. It will show you how much time you've saved um, over time that you've been using it. Um, you'll, you know, again, you can get alerts to make sure that you're staying on top of things like new customer reviews, negative customer, customer reviews. It will show you, um, you know, how long it's been since you've added new photos or how many new customer reviews that you have that you need to respond to, et cetera. Um, so there's a lot here. There's also a lot that I did not go over. Um, actually, one thing that I did want to mention is um, we also have a profile lock and this is huge. Um, this is something Google doesn't offer that local does and, and one of my favorite features. So as you might be aware of, um, you can actually go on a Google Maps listing and make suggested edits to that Maps listing. So, um, you know, a, a random person from the public can like edit your business hours. They can update information that you didn't give approval to. So by turning this profile lock on, you can actually prevent unauthorized changes to your business listing on Google. Um, and then once this is enabled, the information that you've updated here inside of local will be the source of truth. So if there's any discrepancies, we'll immediately publish the updates that you put in 
to ensure that your information on Google remains accurate. Um, and then you can also go in here and see if like there's been anything that's been detected or changes that have been prevented. Um, you can also see your location edit history just in general. So if you've made um, updates to business hours, et cetera, uh, you can see that. So um, we're done ahead of time. <laughs> so I will turn it over to Cecilia. Um, hopefully this wasn't too overwhelming. You'll get a recording of this too, and you'll get that deck that we went over. Um, so, you know, we're here now to answer any questions. And then also after this as well, moving forward, once you're working on connecting your account um, and going through and starting to use it yourself, then we're also available to help you. So Cecilia, I will turn yes. it over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Alexa. Um, that was a really great demo. And I know you mentioned this before you jumped in that it there is a lot there. Um, I think you gave us uh, a preview of a lot that there are a lot of great tools in local th that um, Google Business Profile Direct um, doesn't have, or at least definitely doesn't have right now. Um, I don't have any questions into the question box, but I did want to mention to all of our attendees today that um, so having your Google business profile verified by Google um, is a claiming and verifying is a step one before you can sign up for local. So um, if you need any assistance with that, um, we actually work with our partner Miles Partnership. Um, we have um, appointments, we call them office hours available for free if you're having a very specific Google business profile um, issue, um, if you're having trouble claiming or verifying, or uh, another great example is maybe you somehow have two profiles in Google Maps that need to be merged and um, you need to be um, walked through that process. So um, you can sign up for, it's essentially a 15 minute virtual appointment um, with our friends at Miles Partnership. And I'll just drop the link in the chat. This will also be included um, in the email follow-up. Um, and then, let's see, there we go. Um, and then um, we will be having um, more local training opportunities. Um, we also sometimes do sessions. Um, we, we really love if you would use local. We think it's very beneficial. It has so many features and so many benefits. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that at least you're showing up accurate on Google. And if your preference is to work directly in Google Business Profiles, um, we offer webinar support on that. Um, and to stay in the know with what um, kind of um, uh, webinars Travel Oregon uh, offers, um, we do recommend that you sign up for um, Travel Oregon's industry newsletter, which I literally just had this link open and lost it. So I'm going to drop that in the chat as well. And then um, you will be getting um, an email from me um, once this recording is available. Um, that's going to come from integrated um, at travelorgan.com. So if you have any further questions as you embark on your um, local journey, um, that is the email that you can reach out to at any time and we will get you the support that you need. So, um, wow, we really did an hour webinar in 40 minutes. So um, thank you everyone again for joining us. Uh, please let us know what feedback and questions you have and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks everyone.